Hello everyone, welcome to another bow to bow video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of the process of how I made this heat box behind me. Heat boxes are great tools for boyers, especially when you're trying to add backings, but it's especially useful for using smooth on epoxy, which is most useful when it's actually heat cured using a heat box. So let's get to it. First of all, you'll need to choose a location for the heat box. I'm putting mine up on the wall. You can choose to put it on the floor, but this is the best location for me. It'll be about six and a half feet long and 19 inches tall and 19 inches deep. So it matches up with my other shelf. This way I can also store wood on top of it, as I have a lot of wood to store. Now that we have a spot, let's get materials. So I got some quarter inch plywood here, and I'm gonna use that. That's kind of the constraints. A quarter inch is plenty thick. Because uh, what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to line it with some aluminum insulation uh, after I get it all put together. And that will be my main insulation for reflecting the, the radiant heat that will be going on inside here. That will be coming from light bulbs. And here I am adding a three inch wide quarter inch strip of plywood to the edges of the back and lid. This adds thickness for the screws as I attach the top and bottom to the back. I didn't record me doing this, but I then add a half inch strip of plywood to create the same type of anchor for the sides as I attach them to the rest of the box. Guess it's big enough. Now to put on. A lid. Well, here it is, all put together. My father-in-law came over and helped me with the final assembly, getting it up on the wall and putting in the light fixtures. We're gonna go through now and show you a few of the features so you can make your own. I added the insulation around the entire inside as well as the lid. Those are the parts that aren't insulated. The wall is actually an insulated wall, so I didn't worry too much about that. Plus, I ran out of insulation, so I thought these would be the most important places to put that insulation. I used an upholstery stapler to attach the insulation to the lining of the wall. To attach this to the wall, I just used simple screws into studs. Because I used quarter inch plywood, I decided to add another support to keep the quarter inch plywood from sagging. There's not a lot of weight that's actually put on this, so it doesn't need to really be all that thick, but this just keeps it so it's easier to put the lid on. So here's a simple mechanism I came up with to hold the lid together so that the more heat is sealed inside. It's just a simple rope attached with a screw here with a block of wood so you can wrap it around and hold it tight. So it helps keep that nice and sealed in there. This is key to understanding how your hot box is doing. This is a simple meat or candy thermometer. I just got a hole I drilled through here. And you put it inside so it's about where the bow would be and it will tell me approximately what the temperature is inside. Also, I added these four lights into the heat box. These are the, the sources of the heat. I have two 150 watt light bulbs and one 200 watt light bulb and a place for an extra in case I need it just a little bit hotter. I can turn these on and off by unscrewing them to change the level of heat in the box. With these two bulbs, I'm able to keep just about 140, 150 uh, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, which seems to be pretty good. And if I wanna add just a little bit more, I could probably add another 60 watt or another 100 watt light bulb. For installing the light bulbs, I recommend following the instructions that come with the light fixture that you end up getting. For more information, I would look up instructions on YouTube or online. I used wood mounts over the aluminum to create a sturdy foundation for the fixture and prevent any chance of shorting the lights out. I'd rather be safe than sorry. After drilling a couple of half inch holes, I was able to thread the wiring through into the fixture and then attach it back inside. Doing this, connected them in series, and then connected them all with a simple outlet fixture. Being that I want to use this top a little bit as a shelf, 
I added another L bracket to the top of this quarter inch plywood to add a little bit more stability for when I put my layers of wood on there. Well, there you have it. Heat box finally all put together. I've gone many years as a boyer without actually having a heat box, but now that I have one, I don't know if I ever want to go back. It's very nice to have it as an option whenever you're working on a bow like I did with the Purple Heart bow and finding that I did want to add that extra layer of protection, either fiberglass, another piece of wood, or rod even, whatever you'd like to do. Having a heat box makes that process just better and stronger. Thanks for watching this video, and if you found it helpful, like and subscribe, and help perpetuate this wonderful art of bow making. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Since I'm not an electrician, I'll definitely recommend doing this with my hand. <laughs> Look how it's open, and then I'm pointing at the light bulb, and the light bulb is looking back at me. And then I'm pointing at this block of wood, which is very important, but I don't know why. So don't really follow my hand movements at all, because this is really silly looking. Point it over here, point it around there, oh my goodness. Pointing over there, pointing back to here, oh my goodness, stop. <laughs>